That's what pleases God. So if you're being challenged with sickness in your body today, then let's start believing God afresh, right? Let's start believing Him all over again. Let's not make excuses in our lives. Oh, well, God, He'll do this and so and so. Well, maybe it's not God's will. It is His will. It's all your care. praise hallelujah hallelujah glory to God hallelujah the foundation must be based upon Christ and the blood that was shed we are new creatures now hallelujah but you and I know that people move by knowledge isn't that right I cannot go beyond what I truly know in myself but when I know Hallelujah, that I've been redeemed. When you know you've been redeemed by the blood, you act different. You walk different, isn't it? Hallelujah. There's something that comes with knowing. Hallelujah, who you are. There's authority that you walk in. There's, there's, it's just so different when you know. And God says if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature, right? Old things are passed away. So our present state is what I'm after. Our present state is what I'm trying to get across to you. The Bible declares us not guilty. And so when we agree with the Lord's word, when we understand for the Lord says, uh, if you continue what in my word, then you will, you're my disciples indeed and you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Freedom comes through knowing the truth about who we are. Is that right? And so I'm declaring the good news that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not charging their sins to them. You hear what I'm saying now? So when God makes us righteous, he makes us righteous. Now, 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 listen, don't get me wrong now. I'm not telling you that because you're righteous, you can go and treat your brother or sister wrong. I'm not telling you that. I'm not telling you because you're righteous, you can go back out there and sin. No, 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 no. Why would you go back and sin? sin if God delivered you from sin. Uh, you don't want to live like that. You don't want to live like that. There was a dear price paid for our freedom. Is anybody here what I'm saying? Hallelujah. Glory to God. But against the forces of evil and condemnation, we need to know that we've been declared righteous by God and by faith in his blood. For it was his blood that was shed and atoned for our sin. So when I'm coming to God for healing, I'm coming in agreement to understand who I am and what was done on the cross. I'm coming not in any goodness of my own, but I'm coming because of the blood that was shed on the cross for my sin. Hallelujah. Jesus paid the price already. So once he paid that price for my sin, if I I believe in God if I believe the good news see that's the good news if I believe in the good news then I can have life and I believe there are people out there today that believe in the gospel you believe in the good news and so there's a miracle waiting for you uh, for your sinful state for the thing that happened to you for that tormenting spirit hallelujah for that oppressing on your back and your, your body God says hallelujah there's a healing for you God want to give the healing hallelujah no 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 you can't do it but you can believe God right let's start today believing in God anew and afresh. Um, hallelujah. Let's believe him anew and afresh for what God is doing. So our present state, we're new creatures. All things have passed away. God sees us as new creatures. We must see ourselves as God sees us. Isn't that right? We are not only new creatures, well, because we're new creatures, we've been reconciled. We've been brought back on friendly terms with God. God's not angry with you now, okay? Then the third thing is, I see that, that, that we are to be reconcilers. We are to begin to do to others what we have gotten from God. God reconciles us so we all 
Oh, no, no, I'm not talking about the pastor alone. We all now are become reconcilers now. Once you get saved and there is a mandate, there's a responsibility that comes with salvation. Every man and every woman and boy and girl that knows Jesus Christ have a responsibility to become a reconciler. He said God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, committed unto us. He's committed unto us. He's committed unto us. Um, the word of reconciliation. Um, I don't know about you, but there's somebody on your job. There's somebody that needs to hear the gospel right where you are. They need to know that Jesus died for their sins. They don't have hope. Somebody here today. God says they need to hear that Jesus died for their sins. There are people walking in guilt, even in the body of Christ, because they don't truly understand that Christ died for our sins. The price has been paid. It's like having a banquet, and the ticket, the cost was too much for the average person. But they found out from others the last banquet was so good. And they wanted to be a part of it, but didn't have money. And somebody came along and says, I'm going to pay your way. I'm going to pay the price of your ticket. And when they pay that price, you go to the banquet. And you enjoy all of the benefits and the privileges. But guess what? You didn't pay anything. You didn't pay anything. But you were able to receive the benefit because somebody paid the price for you. That's what Jesus did for our lives. Hallelujah. So when you come to God for healing, don't be resting on what you got going for you. Remember that healing is because of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. He died a substitutionary death. So we're justified. The last thing I see is we're righteous, we're justified, we're declared not guilty, and we're forgiven of our sins. Amen. Amen. And now we want to learn, everybody, we want to learn what's pleasing to God. Isn't that right? Somebody rescue you from drowning, you're ever grateful for them, to them for the rest of your life. Isn't that right? Jesus rescued us from a devil's hell he paid the price we must be forever grateful for what he's done for us we couldn't pay that price but God did aren't you glad that he paid that price hallelujah that's how much God loved us so our present state now is we're new creatures we've been reconciled we're righteous justified not guilty and forgiven and now we want to grow as sons of God and please God in the state that we are, his people. Not guilty. Not guilty. Look at your neighbor and say, not guilty. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. And God brought me to the Old Testament types. How Israel, Israel were God's people. As long as they understood the covenant, blessings, Walked in that covenant, God kept blessing them and just blessing them and blessing them. But then Israel got into idolatry. They got into sin, fornication. They got into all of these things here. They made a golden calf. And so it brought the fiery serpents upon them. But when they repented and got it right, are you hearing me? God's blessings and favor came right back on them, right? That was only a type of our lives today. God washed us from our sins, wrote our names in the book of life, called us his very own people. And so we walk with him. We live for him. 
But if by chance, somehow through ignorance or through unbelief, we fall into a trap of doing things that allows Satan to come and torment our lives. And when God reveals to us where we went wrong and we repent of it, then God removes the demonic powers from away from our lives and restores the blessings of that grace upon our lives. Hallelujah. And it doesn't matter what it is. It doesn't matter what it is because we are his children. So the Old Testament types always things pointing to uh, something about God's mercy and grace. And then uh, I, I want to conclude by sharing with you uh, the sick. When God walked on the face of this earth, one of the things that he did more than anything else was heal the sick and cast out demons. That told us that this is God's will for humanity. It is just as clear as can be that God wants you and I healed. If we're emotionally sick, he wants us healed. If we're physically sick with diseases, he wants us healed. Don't let the doctor tell you that you can't be cured. Isn't that right? The doctors are not Jesus. The doctors are not Jesus. Jesus is our healer and we must put our trust in him. Let's say someone has an incurable disease. Just because scientists have not found a cure for it doesn't mean a thing if we serve the Lord. For God's kingdom works differently. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And we are in his kingdom. I, I'm, I'm, I'm telling you this because sicknesses must be healed. And God wants the sick healed. God wants the sick healed. He wants you and I to understand that's not my will for you to walk in, in sickness. That's not, that does not glorify God. But what glorifies God is when Jesus heals that body. And you lift your hands and you praise God like never before. God gets glory out of your life. And then others hear your testimony and it brings hope to them. Isn't that right? That's what pleases God. So if you're being challenged with sickness in your body today, then let's start believing God afresh, right? Let's start believing him all over again. Let's not make excuses in our lives oh well God he'll do this and so and so well maybe it's not God's will it is his will that every sickness and every disease in our body be healed and that's why if you search the gospels you will see that oh so many uh, situations where the Bible says and he healed all that were sick and he healed all that were sick. And he healed all that were sick. One instance said he sent his word and healed them. Another instance says he lays hands on every one of them. But he healed them all. Are you with me? He healed them all. What God was painting the picture saying to us, this is my will. This is my will. I want sicknesses healed. And if you and I are suffering sickness, if you're suffering sickness by way of television, if you were listening to this message, let me say to you, according to God's word, God wants your sick body healed. No matter what it is. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. But let me conclude by sharing with you what I felt him just kind of prompted me lightly. How sicknesses and diseases come. Some I was kind of looking, doing a little bit of search through the internet, the sicknesses or the leading causes of death in the U.S. Actually, but it went beyond the U.S. It talked about the whole world. Globally, the leading cause for sicknesses, I mean for death, was heart diseases. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Heart diseases. I, I'm talking about physical, the physical organ of the heart, heart diseases. And what did the Lord say in the last time? He said, men's heart failing them for fear of the things coming upon the earth. But saints of God, why do you say this, Brother Her? I'm saying this because heart diseases uh, and cancer were the number one causes of deaths 
And before a person dies, they're sick, right? So you might as well say the number one cause for sicknesses. So now, if that be true, and it is, I believe it, then there's some things that we can learn to avoid those things. Another reason for sicknesses, or another reason for um, yeah, sicknesses is heart, heart conditions. Uh, like this, we're talking about the, the spirit. Because the Bible says a sound heart is a life of this body or the flesh, right? A sound, a cured, wholesome heart. That means a heart that forgives, a heart that has rid itself of anger, bitterness, fears, guilts, condemnations. Any one of these over a prolonged period of time will affect our heart, which will affect our bodies. A sound heart. A curative heart is the life of the body, of the flesh. So when my spirit is in line with God and God heals me of anger and unforgiveness and bitterness, it can extend my life. Are you hearing what I'm saying? That's what I believe God, a part of what he was saying. So a sound heart. That's one of the reasons why God wants us whole, right? So you got you to gotta think about it like this. Here. Why did Jesus spend so much time healing the sick? Was that the only thing important? No, it wasn't. But it was one of the things that God wanted to do if his kingdom was going to rule. Amen. So then, and the other thing was casting out demons. Those were, that was very key. It was like restoration. God was restoring his people so that the effects of sin could no longer dominate that life and that body. And that's what Jesus is doing today. That's what he want to do. And so another reason for sicknesses is hereditary, right? Things are passed on. And even the secular world knows that. They give you this long list. You go to the doctor's office. Have you or anybody in your family ever had this? They got a long list, right? So what do you think they think whenever you say, yes, 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 my mom, my grandmama, you know? They say, well, that's hereditary, right? So if the doctors have understood that through all their studies, there's some truth to it, right? So some of the diseases are hereditary, so they pass on down. Thank God that Jesus can handle it. When he died, he died for all curses, isn't that right? All that stuff is taken care of the cavern. Another reason why people die is, or people get sick is stress and anxiety. Hear me closely. This is so important. Stress and anxiety. But there's a cure for stress and anxiety. Right? You can't be stressing if you're in the presence of God long. Isn't that right? The two don't mix. Hallelujah. If God is the author of peace, you can't have peace and stress at the same time. Isn't that right? Hallelujah, Jesus. Now let me read something. I want you to listen closely. Another reason for sicknesses is wrong eating habits. Wrong eating foods. Now, if God would heal you today or anybody, you that are listening, and you have, are eating some real wrong food, and if you keep it up, it has an effect. And all the praying in the world cannot change your abusing your body. All right, let me, let, let me, see, let me read a little bit of what, I, what I, I, I found out. How many of you love sweets? <laughs> I'm guilty. <laughs> but after I read this, I said, okay, I know how to stop this year. <laughs> Excess sugar 
It says the extra insulin in your bloodstream, as a result of excess sugar, a lot of sugar, can affect your arteries all over your body. It causes their walls to get inflamed, to grow thicker, the walls of your arteries, to grow thicker than normal and more stiff. These are arteries, okay, where the blood flows through. Everybody still with me? This stresses your heart and damages it over time. This can lead to heart disease like heart failure, heart attacks, and strokes. It's getting quiet in here now. What are you saying, Brother Heron? I'm saying we got to walk in wisdom too now. Isn't that right? I can't be gobbling up sweets and love sweets so much and, you know, <laughs> I got to ease on this one because I've been guilty of that. <laughs> yeah, I'm guilty. I'm guilty. I, but I'm going to change it. <laughs> With the help of the Lord. Hallelujah. All right, I ain't finished yet. I got two more. <laughs> All right, greasy foods like fries, chips, pizza, and donuts are high in calories and unhealthy fats. A high intake of these foods can lead to weight gain, obesity, heart disease, diabetes, bloating, diarrhea, acne, and impaired brain function. Y'all, you hear what I'm saying? Look at somebody say, you got to eat better now. <laughs> Mercy, Lord. Yes, Lord. <laughs> All right, there's one last one. Hallelujah. Stress and anxieties. Anxiety can trigger your fight or flight stress response. We all, have, we all have what is known as stress hormones in our body. All right? And there is, it said there's a tiny control tower in the brain called hypothalamus. It's a tiny control tower. It signals the brains and signals when this stress these stress hormones are to be released in our body. When you think about how powerful and beautiful we're made, you say, God, you are awesome. And it says here, um, it says, um, anxiety can trigger your fight and flight stress response and release a flood of chemicals and hormones like adrenaline into your system. In the short term, this increases your pulse and breathing rate so your brain can get more oxygen, your heart races faster, your breath quickens, and your muscles are ready for action. And, this, uh, and then, it, so your, uh, the purpose of this is, it prepares you for action, for a response, an appropriate response in intense situation. And right, all right, now, before I finish this last one, is, I got tickled because me and my two brothers, you know, we grew up on a farm, and the landlord had some hogs. And so the sow is the one that raises it, that has the, the little babies, pigs. So the sow had, had just had some pigs. And so me and the brothers got in the hog pen. You know, we, there was a big, big, wide hog pen. But we had to take our time and climb in it over the fence. All right? All right, we were young. I probably was like eight or nine or nine or ten. My brother, was, David, was two years younger, and Ron was five years younger. So we, somehow or another, you know, we did a whole lot of crazy stuff. There we were in the hog pen. We got near the, the, the p little pigs. And so that sow started clucking like a something weird. Saliva so started coming out of her mouth. And here we are, as young as we were, and he started to come in toward us because he thought we were going to harm the little ones. Boy, my brother David, 
the adrenaline kicked in. His heart began to beat rapidly. His muscles began to be prepared for action. And he ran so fast, he jumped over the fence. And we could not figure out how he jumped over that fence. But I got tickled because <laughs> all of our bodies are equipped by God in a time of fight or flight. It's a safety mechanism. Another instant came to my mind. You know how when guys, they're guilty and the, 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 the law catches them. I've seen on TV, guys, when the cops stop them and they get out of the car, and they jump out of their car and they start running. And the cops can't catch them on their feet. Because they're afraid, right? <laughs> but now, I'm concluding with this. Listen to this. But, all right, that's all good, right? When the stress response or the hormones keep firing day after day at that height or that level, right? It could put your health at a serious risk. It's like an automobile, you know, it's, it's, it's when it, it's, it's idled and you rev the engine to top speed. It wasn't designed just to be revved, used like that, right? So it's so important that, the, that what I'm saying is that what, what the, 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 the scientists were saying is that we're made so beautiful. And we're made to be able to do the right thing thing in s difficult situations but the situation if, if, if those adrenalines are flowing in all the time because there's a lot of stress and anxieties over a period of time it can do some serious risk to our body people die because of stress and anxieties but you can't be stressing in the presence of God isn't that right you can't be stressing if you have a healthy diet of this word, right? Because God is the cure for all of this. So all in all, yes, God heals today. But if you look at somebody and say, but you've got to eat better. And you have to get rid of stress. Amen. Let's give God some praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory to God. Jesus has come. Would you stand with me that we might have jubilee? Ah, glory to God. A favorable year of the Lord. Ooh, glory to God. Hallelujah. That's all your